Well, hello, DAC teammates. I've not done a DAC live on Facebook in a long time. This is not scheduled. I just wanted to get this video out here. I think it's critical information that can help you as you're building your team. As you know, with DAC, we serve clients and we build giants. Part of building giants is you having a team that you can build, right, and grow and, and have success with and get to that residual income or that team override income, right? That's part of the benefits of having the DAC business. So again, this is a non-scheduled training. I just wanted to jump on here and go live with this. I think it's good. And I'm, I think you're going to want your entire team to watch this. We may even put it in our video somewhere. But in any event, what we're going to talk about here is something called tap rooting. Now with tap rooting, you know that we, we, we have a, a theme in our business called help three, get three, right? It's kind of a block that you want to uh, think about. This is the strongest shape on the planet, right? You, you, can't, you, you can't make that fall apart. Help three get three is our theme, right? So you're going to want to help three agents get started, help them get three agents, help them get three agents who get started, who help with three others, etc. This is our plan, and you want to just keep repeating that process. By repeating that process, what happens is you move through the DAC residual plan paid out by Longevity. The more personal leaders you have or personal productive groups you have, they're called one stars. The more one stars you have, the more you climb up the residual ladder, right? Well, how do you do that? Do you do that because you find leaders? I mean, good luck finding leaders. Most leaders are not found, they're fostered. Okay, write that quote down. Leaders aren't found in network marketing, they're fostered. Once in a while, you'll stumble on someone who needs no direction and they're in the top one-tenth of one percenters and they're just gonna run. But for the most part, you're gonna find someone with the hunger and the desire and the coachability and the willingness but they don't yet believe in themselves completely or they've never had massive success yet. Or even if they have, they want someone to encourage them and, and give them appreciation and recognition and, and team up with. So you're gonna wanna foster your leaders, but taprooting is all about the beautiful thing of our industry is you don't have to find the person, you keep fostering leadership and working with the people who come, whether you recruited them or not, tap rooting down to find the success. And I just wanna share a story with you. When I first got in this industry, um, I was in a program that I recruited a few people. And the first person I recruited, his name was Mike. Okay, another guy's name was Frank. Another guy's name was Bobby. And this was all within my first uh, few days of joining the business, right? Now, in that company, you had to pay money. $500 minimum, $5,000 was the maximum. So my buddy Mike got started. He spent $5,000 to join, okay? My buddy Frank got started. He spent $5,000 to join. And my buddy Bobby spent $500 to join, okay? This is what it cost them to get started. Now, what happened is Mike really loved the business, so he started talking to some people, and Mike took it serious. He was coachable, he got through the training with me, just like everyone else, and he started recruiting a team of people, right? And he kept building, and they kept building, and building, and building, and that group continued to grow. Mike was serious, Mike was coachable. Frank, another long-time friend of mine, in fact, we named our dog after Frank, God rest his soul, he passed away years ago as a young man from cancer, unfortunately, but Frank, one of my dearest friends, he said, I'm never going to recruit people. I'm not going to sell this product. He bought $5,000 worth of product at the time. It was a water filter. And he said, I'm never going to sell it to anyone. I'm not going to talk to him. I'm going to advertise in newspapers. And he was the social network at the time was the newspaper. I'm just going to advertise in newspapers. And he recruited a college buddy. Um, and his name was, boy, what was his name? Rob. And Rob bought $5,000 worth of product, and they both said to themselves, we've got $10,000 worth of wholesale product now. We'll sell through the newspapers. And that's all they ever did. And they kept trying to sell it in the newspapers. How many think they sold through the newspapers? Zero. I ended up buying all their product from them at a discounted amount because it was sitting in their garages, right? So I bought a lot of that back because of guilt, but it's because they were doing it wrong. He sold his $5,000 worth the first month doing it the right way. And so did a lot of the people on their team, but they wanted to do it a different way. They're uncoachable. They just, they weren't interested in building the business the way it started. So they didn't lead to anywhere. So what did I do? I raced them, right? And I replaced them with a guy named Brian. And Brian was another person I worked with at General Motors. And Brian led to some people. 
right? Who led to some people. Now Mike's group, guess what? Some people in Mike's team, and Mike included, are still involved with our business today. This is 1991. I still am generating well over $100,000 worth of revenue out of people who started in 1991. Because you tap root through. Now, Mike happened to be one of the leaders, but he's not active right now. He's not super active. He makes an override. But people in his team are. There's people down here who are super active leaders 20 levels away. Um, and I'm going to tell you how to tap root in a minute. Brian recruited some people, recruited some people, recruited some people, recruited some people. And we got to a leader down here about seven levels down. Her name was Ann. And Ann was really serious about the business. But Ann, I didn't know Ann. And so we started working with Ann, and Ann had, Ann had success. And still to this day, we have revenue coming in under Ann's team. And then Bobby was a guy, check this out, Bobby at the presentation. You know how in the four steps, or at the end of the presentation, we say there's three types of people. The first type isn't interested, the second type wants to think about it, and the third type's ready to go. Let the person know if you're one, two, or three. Bobby says to me, I worked with him at Arthur Anderson right out of college, and he said to me, Dave, I'm a one. I'm just not interested. I said, no problem. Now, we were in live meetings, so we would take a break and ask them, if you're a two or three, stick around for the four steps of starting. And see, I didn't create this system. I got out of GM on this system. We just keep using it and update it, right? So the three steps came, and, and uh, he said, I'm a one. I said, no problem. He shook his hand. We used to teach. If someone's a one, don't talk him into it shake their hand, pull them up, say no problem, and walk them to the door for them to leave so you can get back in and sit down for the four steps of starting. And only people in the room now are the ones who really want to be here. So I said, no problem, Bobby. I understand it's not for everyone, like they said. Uh, I'll see you at work tomorrow. And we started walking out. And he goes, no, 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 I'll stick around for the four steps of starting. I'll stick around for the four steps of starting. Bobby decided after the four steps of starting, wait a minute, I want to do this. So Bobby said, yes. Guess what? Bobby recruited someone Oh, what was his name? It doesn't matter. Uh, but he recruited someone we worked with at Arthur Anderson as well. We'll just call him Tim for right now. Tim went out and recruited actually someone named Tim. Okay, so we'll give this guy Paul instead. I don't forget his name. I didn't know him. Still don't remember his name. But Bobby recruited him. He recruited Tim. Tim recruited a guy named Mike. And Mike was serious. Mike plugged in. Bobby was never serious. He's no longer here anymore. Paul was never serious. He's not here anymore. Tim was serious for a little while, recruited Mike. Mike was serious. Mike was the leader. Who do you think I was working with? This is you, or in this case, me. Who was I working with? Mike. I wasn't talking Bobby into this. I tried to ask him to leave. I wasn't talking Paul into this. I tried to ask him to leave. Or I didn't actually, but Tim, I didn't talk into it, but I was there to help him. Tim ended up becoming my mortgage agent at one time. But Mike was serious. And Mike, we started talking to some people. And Mike was where I tapered it. See, I worked on, I was working with Mike as if I sponsored him. I was working with Mike as if I enrolled him. I was working with Mike. And guess what? Mike recruited a bunch of people. One of the people he recruited, his name was Nick. This is all in 1990, between 91 and 96 in that area. Nick uh, gets started. Nick's a 19-year-old kid. We meet him at a restaurant. Not kid. Some of you are only 19. But he's a young man. He doesn't have decades of experience, right? He's going to junior college at the time. Not sure what he's going to do. He wanted to be a professional baseball player. That didn't pan out. So he's at junior college waiting tables. We recruit him. Nick says, I'm coachable. I'm hungry. I'm serious. I want to make it. I want to make the money I could have made in network market. I mean, in, in baseball. So who are we working with? We're working with Nick. Mike had a bunch of other people here who relied to a bunch of other people. But none of them were serious. Nick was serious. Nick, so I later on, this continues to grow and there's more people than we have. But you're working with this person and this person and this person and this person. All the people who lead you to them, they're critical. You see why we're free? Because I didn't like that these people had to lose money to lead to Anne. I didn't want that. I didn't want to make money on all their losses. I wanted to still get to Ann or Tim or Mike and Nick. I wanted to get to them. And Nick recruited several people. One of them's name was Blake. Okay, some of you know these names. You know where I'm going with this. But so then I leave, I leave this company that I'm a part of because of some issues that I don't like about the company. I start my own company. And guess what? All these people... We're from some of my first reps and many others. I'm not adding others to this, but there was other, this three who became three became another triangle of three names, who became another triangle of three names. And the key is, if they make erasers, because if someone's not serious, no problem. You replace them with someone who is. Right? These people are, this is this guy's negative, but they led to someone who's positive. Great. You work with that person. This person's inactive, but they lead to this person who's 
who's going after it, you work with this person. So taprooting is about finding the people in your team who demonstrate the hunger, the coachability, the willingness. And the only way you know that is if you're actively engaged in meeting new people. I had a new agent join an hour ago. First thing I did was text them and say, welcome to the family. Uh, get your welcome letter. I'm glad to see you're here. Uh, check out the Get Started training. Go through those three trainings and let's get together for your game plan. Within 10 seconds of him joining, I got my email and he immediately had that text. I've not talked to him yet. Those are the steps. Talk me no time to send him a text. He might be watching right now. I'm glad to have him on the team. But we don't know where anyone is yet until they demonstrate where they are. So our job is not to find leaders, it's to foster those who demonstrate what we need of leaders, which is the hunger and the desire and the coachability and the willingness. Those four things, you encourage those four things, you've got a seed in the right soil. It doesn't matter how much you encourage someone who's not hungry, not desire, not, not coachable, not willing to get after it. It doesn't matter how much encouragement you give, they're not going anywhere. But you tap root through. So I ended up starting my own company in 1997, and all these people... People come with me and this is how we meet this guy and this guy in my own company but this person came for my first two months in this industry if Bobby walks out after that first presentation and doesn't come back in I never meet any of these people but thank God he didn't for me thank God he didn't unfortunately for him he's no longer active in this industry so he doesn't make anything in all this but when I start my own company, and then later on I end up leaving that company, this individual here was one of our top 10 producers. And I said to him that day, I remember, I said, you're a titan in this industry, bud. You're going to do amazing. He was only 22 at the time, maybe. And so when I leave to start, part of my leaving that company was when I sold my shares, I started the company. I was the number one shareholder, but I didn't own control of it. So I, I felt I had to leave to start a new company, but I had a non-compete. I wrote the non-compete, but I had one and I said, hey, if you'll remove my non-compete and let me start a new company, I will leave and allow you guys to continue to go. So that was part of my leaving was to remove my non-compete. What they did is they changed the name of the company. It was called the Free Network at the time. They changed the name of the company to Visalis, and they took this guy and said, we'll make you the founder, and you're another guy, Blake, founder, because you're some of the top producers. The other most leaders left the company when I did. But they stayed, and they became founders and created a great company called Visalis and went on to do great things. It was really the company we started called the Free Network, but they, we changed, they changed the name and went with it. Good for them. But the point is, Nick doesn't know about this industry unless Bobby says yes in that presentation. And he doesn't unless that dude, who I can't even remember his name, told us about Tim. And if Tim doesn't tell Mike, I don't ever meet Mike. See, I can't take credit for this. You can't take credit for your team, but you can take credit for being the fertilizer, for being the encourager, for be, being the building the giant mentality. You got the mentality for that. So that company continued to go on. There's still, he's made, I don't know how many millions of dollars in this industry because he came back to the presentation. Now, what's interesting is I've recruited because of groups I've started. Uh, I didn't recruit them all myself, but because of groups I've started, I would say it's 300,000 people I've recruited into this industry, maybe 400,000. I don't know for sure. Um, heck, the escape team at Longevity's over 100,000 itself. DAC is almost 60. The free network was several hundred thousand. So let's just say 300,000 people. I know that's under. Of the 300,000 people, you know who recruited me into this industry? You know how many people have recruited me into this industry? Zero. I have never been recruited into Network Mark. Zero times. 300,000 people. Now, they would have found out about it anyway, possibly. But because I called out of an ad myself, looking with my own hunger, I found an ad for Start Your Own Business. That's the only way I've ever been recruited into this industry. I've never, no one's ever called me and said, hey, Dave, you want to make money outside of what you're currently doing? Hey, Dave, I started a business. I'm looking to grow it nationwide. You know how many diamonds in the rough are out there right now in your more market list, in your phone that you've not called? And if it's not them, it doesn't have to be them. It doesn't have to be them. This person's running their own company. Now, good for them. That has nothing to do with us. But guess what? Mike led to people who led to people who are still some of our top producers. Down way over here, a good percentage of my escape business, which is partnered in Longevity, came from this person who doesn't override it because they quit. 
But it, I didn't quit because they did. I kept taprooting and I taprooted to Mike. Mike is no longer active with us. He earns an override. He earns an override on his team. But he's got people in his team here who are really active with us. Really active. Under, under uh, uh, this guy here led to a group that ended up, you ever heard of Raymond and Yolanda Brown in, a, in Young Jeopardy? That's in this group way down here somewhere. Way down here is a leader, and they've got leaders and leaders, and they've recruited dozens and dozens and dozens of leaders. And it's all because my buddy from childhood said yes, and he recruited some people who said yes, who recruited some people who said yes, but none of them were leaders. None of them took on a leadership role. Not one of these people were leader. I mean, they are leaders in their own right, but I mean, they're not leaders in our business. They didn't say, I'm focusing on this. They participated participation gets you a trophy in little league today it didn't get me crap as a kid and it shouldn't get anyone crap except camaraderie and social ability and things networking but it doesn't give you performance based results it's participation performance this person wanted to perform Raymond and Yolanda wanted to perform they are driving their longevity escape group of longevity. They're driving that. And it all came from my very first recruit in 1991 that if I don't recruit him, I don't know them. Because they were linked to people, linked to people, linked to people. I didn't recruit them personally. Linked to people, linked to people, linked to people, 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 people. There's probably, no kidding, 100 levels of people between him and them. But I talked to them like I personally enrolled them. They're leaders. All these people in between us aren't active anyhow. Some of them are active down in here. But most of the people are not active. And, and some of the people override this still because they're smart enough to qualify, but they're not, part, uh, they're not uh, performing. They're just participating. But the point behind this taprooting thing is just have some vision beyond the I can't recruit it. I don't have anyone that I've personally enrolled. I shouldn't say that. I can't think of many personally enrolled people right now who went out and became the leader. I'm sure I've got some. I'm probably insulting someone right now by saying that. Because I've, oh, no, no, I've got some, some certain, I've got some leaders I'm thinking about right now in DAC. I'm talking about in my early days. A lot of DAC agents are getting after right now that are personally enrolled and longevity agents. But I'm talking about my original 1991 group. None of the people I personally enrolled back then, I got to be careful. I hope that's accurate. I'm trying to think of my history. None of them are active anymore. So, but they all led me to where most of my, about 90% of my income comes from. So don't think that you have to personally enroll the people. Don't think it. Now give everyone the benefit of the doubt, encourage and help because you don't know who they're going to lead to. And the reason this is free is because it's easy to help three who get three and then do it again and do it again and do it again and keep helping three who get three with it being free. And no hard feelings. You're not going to have to buy someone's product back like the first people I put on there, right? A lot of people in my history, it's just where my heart was. I, didn't, I shouldn't have felt that burden, but I did. And so... I'd always buy their product back from them, right? Uh, because I felt bad that they bought. No, it was on them, but I'm the one who led them, and it was my excitement that they said yes to. So this coffee mug my daughter gave me today, get after it. So the bottom line is, folks, tap rooting is all about understanding, number one, it may be the people you personally enroll. Some of these people were active for years with me and slowly pittered off. But everyone, all of my active teams came from my first year in this industry. Um, all of my active escape teams came from my first year in this industry, people I recruited. So uh, because I continued taprooting and taprooting and staying active with them, and I didn't walk away, I kept doing it. Even when I left to start my own company, I, built, I maintained a relationship, relationship with them, and I didn't go target them. I didn't try to tell them all to join. I said what I'm doing, and then when they learned, they wanted to follow. When I left this company, the free network, and started Escape, I didn't call one leader, not one, not not a one, even though I'd worked with them for years. I didn't try to take any of them. They had a business. They had the residuals. I wanted them to stay. I wanted them to stay with what they had and keep doing it. I was going to start over. I, I couldn't do things with the partnership I had anymore. But learned from that. And that business continued to thrive as it should have. 
I'm glad it did. It was a baby we birthed and worked our tails off on for several years. So I'm glad it survived. But the bottom line, the point behind all this is it's not the people. You don't know where the future is going to go, but you do know this. If you do your part and you encourage and you coach and you taproot, you encourage and you coach and you taproot, you encourage, you coach and you taproot, guess what you're going to do? You're going to build relationships with the performers, with the people that aren't just participating. Some of the participants will come and go, but you'll find the performers and you're going to take active role. There's a people, the person who enrolled me into that water business doesn't make a dime today at their own decision. There was a time we moved and I said, hey, I'm signing up. You want to be my enroller again? He hadn't been active in a year. I'll, I'll, I'll enroll under you again because after all, you're the one who, who, who I signed up under originally. I want to honor you with that. He said, no, that's okay. There will be people who are participants who don't benefit long term because they choose to opt out. They don't have the same belief. But the ones who stick it through, I stuck it through. The people who enrolled him didn't stick it through. The people who enrolled him happened to start their own company and have done, they do $800 million a year right now. So I still have a relationship with them. They stuck it through. When you stick it through in this industry, you make a lot of money. When you are not just a participant, you get paid very, very well. And it really comes down to, are you hungry? Do you have a desire? Do you have a strong reason why? Are you coachable? And are you willing to do it? Are you hungry? Do you have a strong reason why? Do you have a desire? Are you coachable? Are you willing to do it? If you're willing to do that, then take on the role of being an encourager to others, tap root through others, and don't quit. Don't quit. Just don't quit. Well, David, it's not working right. Hey, I had to start a company that I started on my own because of things. I felt I had led. I had to leave a company I'd given 90 hours a week to for four years and we were one of the fastest growing companies ever offered millions of dollars for the company I had to leave it to start new because of integrity reasons I get it it sucks to work hard and not get paid something or work hard and not earn yet or work hard and not have a team that's producing yet and that all sucks I get it who cares you stick it through any business out there sucks at times you own a restaurant franchise with 30 locations it's gonna suck a lot Headaches of employees and pandemics and whatever. Now you got to put six foot stickers in every location and get masks on every employees and deal with them barking about they can't breathe through their masks and all that. Get it. Believe me, no business doesn't come with sucks sometimes, but there's nothing out there better. I've been a rep and I've been an owner of a network marketing company. I can tell you it's a heck of a lot better being a rep unless you love the, the, what it takes to lead the company. You got to love that because most reps are going to not do a whole lot. Uh, they're going to want to do a lot. Some, the small percentage, are going to be complainers constantly and not produce anything. And the small percent are going to outproduce anything you could ever imagine and not complain at all. Just bring b blessings. And it's a combination of all of that that makes our company amazing. But yeah, there's going to be times you have a team that doesn't do anything. Who cares? There's going to be times when you have teams who say they're going to do something and don't. Who cares? You stick through it anyway. If you're a business owner, you keep on going. And that's part of where it is. The good news is they haven't lose, lost a dime. But you taproot. You find them. And you don't worry about if you recruited them in 1991 and they're no longer active. He's making a check every month still. Hasn't done anything since 1993 maybe. It still gets paid on all this revenue. Because I wouldn't have all that without him. I wouldn't have all that fortune. These people all left. But I wouldn't have all this without him sticking around in that presentation. And I'm glad they taught me in training when someone says they're not interested to not try to talk him into it. Because you know what it would have done? It would have talked him out of it. But because I didn't try to talk him into it, because I said, no problem, buddy. Hey, thanks for coming out. I'll see you at work tomorrow. And started walking him out of the room. He said, no, no, I'll stick around. Uh, he, he felt a need. He's told me that. He told me that many times then. Had you tried talking me into it, I would have said, no, get out of my face. But because you didn't, I joined. That was my first week in this industry. I'm so glad I wasn't a fire hose trying to talk him into it because of my training told me not to and I was coachable. As much as I want to say, dude, what are you talking about? What, are you don't, what, what don't you see? That's what I was thinking, but I never said it. I followed the training. Follow the training. Be coachable. Tap root through. The secret is help three, get three, and tap root through all of them and find the participants be thankful for the participants, encourage the participants, and once in a while you'll find a person who your encouragement and performance, they start stepping up. They just start doing more. They seem a little different. They talk a little different. They shake hands a little different. They respond a little different. You can just feel something a little bit different. But none of them just 
stumble on you. That's a unicorn. Good luck. Instead, foster. Don't find. Foster. And encourage that leadership. Taproot through people. And you win. God bless you all.